Controllers have had rumble for ages, since the Nintendo 64, but haptic feedback can relay a much broader range of vibrations than just the generalized shaking you get from the DualShock 4. The Nintendo Switch, for example, employs a form of haptic feedback called HD Rumble. A minigame in 1-2 Switch has you guessing how many individual virtual balls are bouncing around inside your controller just by feeling the HD Rumble. So haptic feedback will allow you to feel a much greater variety of sensations in your PS5 controller. Some PC hardware person is probably going to actually the hell out of me in the comments, but if my calculations are correct, threads are a virtual version of the CPU core, essentially allowing the processor to behave like it's more advanced than it really is. Sort of like I'm doing right now, mansplaining PC hardware terminology. Anyway, the Ryzen processor the PS5 is packing is technically 8 core, but multi-threading means it behaves like it's 16 core, which will allow it to multitask and do twice as much important computer stuff at a time than it's supposed to. Now, theoretically, this means the new video games on PlayStation 5 will be much more fun than literally anything you've ever experienced before and so immersive that reality will seem broken and janky in comparison. Or maybe games will run more smoothly, load faster, and have a more consistent frame rate. TLDR, the threading means the processor does more stuff at once. Next gen. While it may sound like the name of a deli owner in my Long Island hometown, ray tracing is actually a new way of capturing the complexity of real-world illumination in gaming by reversing the real-life process of how illumination works. Ray tracing is meant to generate more realistic shadows and reflections through what I can only assume are complicated maths. The modeling system calculates how individual rays of light seen from the player's perspective interact with in-game objects and originate from a specific source. This one you probably know. RAM is an acronym for Random Access Memory. You can basically think of it as the short-term memory of any computer. The more RAM a console has, the more cool stuff it can do. Now, we don't know how much RAM the PS5 has yet, but the PS4 Pro has 8 gigs of RAM and the Xbox One X has 12, so one would guess the PS5 will have more than 12, maybe even double at 24. Did you ever pull an arrow taut in a video game and wonder, hmm, what if this controller simulated that bow's tension? Well, even if you haven't actually thought of that, adaptive triggers can essentially allow for that in your game. Based on what Sony has revealed with the new controller tech, it seems as if the new controller's triggers will be able to produce tension that simulates the player's actions in-game. In the olden days, hard drives were basically big chunks of magnet that stored information and would spin around super fast while little tiny arms jumped at back and forth to access the files, but an SSD or solid state drive is basically a big fat chunk of memory with no moving parts which can access files way faster. While people have been upgrading their PS4s from mechanical hard drives to SSDs currently, having a PS5 come standard with one will mean faster installs, shorter load times, and less funny little noises coming from inside your console. Like little mouse DJing. Sony revealed there are eight processor cores for the PS5, and I'll be honest with you, I know very little about cores unless they have to do with Ben & Jerry's. Luckily, IGN's own Kevin Lee broke them down quite simply. He said, quote, there are eight processor cores in the PS5, which are the part of a CPU that reads instructions to perform specific actions and complete tasks. The more cores your processor has, the more tasks your chip can accomplish simultaneously. Kevin went on to say, quote, Now these tasks can be anything from opening up your save file to moving left or right on the PlayStation menu. When it comes to gaming specifically, your processor will use these cores to complete calculations every time you take a step, shoot a bullet, or blow up a car. Even just standing still, the processor is constantly making calculations on where you are in relation to other in-game objects, and it constantly tells the graphics card or GPU what to render. Remember when 4K was a big deal since it quadrupled the resolution of our TVs? 8K is doing the same thing for Ultra HD TVs. The biggest reason 8K exists right now is to allow you to get an even bigger television. We currently have 4K TVs that go as big as 85 inches, but after you get to 65 inches, you start to lose some detail because there's space in between each of the pixels. With a sharper 8K display, suddenly you can have a TV that fills up the entirety of your living room. However, there are still a lot of unknowns about 8K TVs and almost hardly any reason to get one just now. For one thing, there's no video connector standard that supports it yet. Your regular HDMI cable won't. Most importantly, there's hardly any 8K content designed to really take advantage of these TVs yet. While the PS5 may promise it can provide an 8K picture, the claim seems a bit dubious as you need some of the best gaming PC hardware around to power a 4K display at 60 frames per second. You can be certain that the PlayStation 5 will have to make a few compromises in visual fidelity to render an 8K experience. 
USB or universal serial bus ports have been around for around 20 years and are constantly getting little tweaks and upgrades, and PlayStation 5 will see the controller, and presumably its peripherals, upgraded to USB-C. Now, PS3 controllers use the USB Mini, which a lot of PSVR owners probably still have lying around to charge their PS Move motion controllers because Sony, for whatever reason, didn't feel like upgrading those with virtual reality, whatever. Meanwhile, PlayStation 4 controllers use the USB Micro, which had those weird little tongs on there, and I feel like they just, they're, they're very delicate and fussy, but thankfully, everything comes with them, so you probably have like 15 extra ones lying around. USB-C, meanwhile, is the standard for a lot of Android phones, newer Mac laptops, as well as the Nintendo Switch, and I like it. It's big. It's smooth. It doesn't matter which way you, you put it in. It works either way. That's what she said. That's my joke. Damn it, Dwight. But this will mean faster charging for the PlayStation 5 controller and yet another species of cable to have lying around in a drawer. 